What's up, gang? So today we're talking about the first of a new collaborative line of swords that's coming from an Angus Trim and Valiant Armory. Um, this is the, the first of that lineup, the so-called Tauber uh, Longsword uh, that we're about to talk about in a minute. Um, basically, the way that I understand that this partnership is happening is that Angus has done the design for all the handling characteristics and kind of, uh, you know, kind of the mechanics of how he wants them to cut and, and handle, um, along with Sonny over at Valiant and the team there is actually doing, I believe, the manufacturing on these, like milling out the blades and whatnot, and Angus has approved has approved it all. Um, and yeah, basically, like what you're getting with this package is uh, you're getting like really next level aesthetics, uh, along with you know the kind of handling characteristics and cutting capacity that Angus Trim has you know kind of gotten a name for in the world of uh, high end production swords. Um, so yes, yeah, you can actually see like on my wall back there, I have two other of Angus's blades. Um, so yeah, you know, like for functional cutters and martial arts tools, you know, I've, I've always loved his work, but, uh, anyways, like going back to this one for a second. So this is the so-called Tauber longsword package here. I actually chose to get the, uh, the scabbard version, um, which is an optional upgrade upgrade. You can just get the sword itself, but you know, I wanted like a nice scabbard. This is actually the only, uh, sword that I have a scabbard for, uh, the only European sword, I should say that I, that I have a scabbard for. Um, that's like a nice custom scabbard. The sword itself is a Type 18B and it has a, a, an octagonal scent stopper pommel. I'm, I'm actually a big fan of scent stopper pommels. One of my other a Angus Trim swords that's living on the wall back there uh, actually has a scent stopper pommel from back when he used to offer those. Um, so as soon as I saw this, I was like, okay, I, I gotta have it. Um, going over like some of the details here. So you have your leather wrapped grip and this is, a, it's an octagonal grip in it. I really like the way that they've like kind of refined it. Uh, it's got like cord wrapping, you know, and then like the leather over it. And uh, you can't like really feel the seam. I can see it and it's, you know, it's, it's there, uh, but it's really nicely done. You know, like it's not really like there's no tactile sensation to it, but it does have like these three very nice uh, risers on the hilt itself. Um, the cross guard here, you can see actually has a, you know, a little bit of file work in it. It's nothing like super fancy, um, you know, but it's all really nicely done. All the lines and everything are really clean. And it's the same on the pommel here, uh, you know, all really nice clean lines, very well done. Um, and it looks like maybe they have like kind of blued this and then, you know, like kind of like maybe, you know, like dialed it back some on the bluing. So it's not like totally, totally dark, but it's just like a nice gray finish. Um, and one thing you'll notice too is the peen is really clean and really well done on this as well. So, um, so yeah, good job on that guys. Um, the scabbard, you know, like which I said is actually an optional upgrade is just absolutely gorgeous. You can see here, it has very fine like leather work. Um, you know, I've got like the little harness here so you can actually wear the sword valiant, you know, like sent me a little sword belt and stuff, which you'll see demonstrated in a minute. Um, and the shape also is like a nice, like, looks like it's maybe cut out of sheet metal and then like formed. Um, but it's like a really like nice solid piece, you know, and it fits like really smoothly and it's very even. Um, so yeah, like the scabbard is really high quality work. <laughs> One thing to be aware of is, uh, at first the scabbard like really fit like kind of, kind of tight. Um, but it has like loosened up. So like before I could hold the sword upside down and it wouldn't fall out. But now, uh, if the sword flips upside down, you know, then, then like it does slide out. And so I, I can shim that, you know, but like that's just something that, that I have noticed. And I did actually have an incident while I was out playing around with it the first day. Uh, my first time wearing a sword really. So, you know, so it's not you know, something that I should have been prepared for, but I had actually slipped out and uh, I got like a little ding on the pommel. So that kind of sucks, but like actually, you know, it's not that bad. And, and I use my swords anyway, so it's all good. Um, <clears throat> anyways, let's go ahead and let's pull this thing out. And like, like, let's take a look at it. So I unsheathed the blade here, discard this. Um, so like I said, this is a type 18B um, long sword. And basically like what kind of defines them is they have like this, you know, like nice defined central ridge here coming to a relatively acute point. Um, you know, and it's not as acute as some, this, these blades do actually retain like a pretty good cutting capacity. Um, one thing that is like kind of cool is you have the Valiant and Angus trim, uh, you know, touch mark there. So kind of nice, nice little detail to have. Um, so let's talk numbers, shall we? So let's start with the weight. So the weight uh, that is advertised is two pounds, 10 ounces. Um, I threw this on my scale and like I found that that is accurate. Um, as far as the length of this weapon, it's a, it's a 45 inch, 45 inch sword, um, maybe a touch over, but you know, like I measured it like right about 45 inches. Um, the blade makes up 35 inches of that. And then once you get like to the half, you're basically getting, ooh, this 
a little sketchy here, uh, for the heft, you're getting uh, about 9.5 inches, uh, you know, from the bottom of the cross guard. And then, of course, the cross guard is a, is a half inch there. So that makes up your total overall length of 45 inches. Um, one thing that did take me a second to get used to with this is that I'm used to, uh, you know, like, uh, HEMA weapons tend to have like a longer hilt and uh, my other Angus trims also have about a 10 inch hilt on them um, So this is about an inch shorter of a hilt than I'm usually used to uh, and about three inches shorter in blade length than than my other uh, Angus trims as well So it did take me a second when I was like doing some cutting and kind of performance tests with the sword to get used to not having that extra inch of length. And so if you're used to longer long swords like if you're a HEMA practitioner then you know be aware that that's going to be a thing. So talking about like the handling and agility of this thing it's just insane like like by far this is the most you know like agile handling long sword uh that i that i've ever you know used even you know like getting used to that shorter hilt like once i you know was used to missing that extra inch like you know this thing like i can just kind of get it to go basically wherever i want with no problem even using it one-handed you know i i have found that i am able to to swing this thing around one-handed relatively comfortable you know, the point control is like really excellent. Like even thrusting from, from Ox, which is kind of a difficult position to thrust from accurately, uh, I was able to, to nail a moving target. Um, and yeah, like really, like you can just like kind of get the point to go wherever you want. And I'm not, I'm not the best thruster by any means, uh, but you know, I am, a, I am a pretty good cutter. Despite being as agile as it is with this friendly uh, point control as it has, like, you know, it, it also is a ferocious cutter. Like, uh, you know, I, I it really cuts with authority, which is kind of surprising given how light it feels. Um, you know, like moving, you know, like chopping through like pumpkins and like I got like a little bit of cardboard and some water bottles. Uh, you know, I had no problem like eating eating these targets. I'm take off some thin little slices so I don't just blow through this thing. Yum. Perfect, just damn good. There we go. Ooh, that was a nice one. Right. I do like one cut that I make on the pumpkin where I try to go through the uh, widest part of it, and I don't quite go through. Um, but that's really that's really like me kind of compensating for the stand, which I probably talked about in the video footage but if you like to cut stuff then like you know for recreational cutting like you're not going to be at all disappointed with, with the performance of this thing. And a lot of these little uh little errors that get made when cutting uh, off a stand like this that's kind of broad have to do with kind of trying to compensate i talked about this in the video before uh trying to compensate for the stand at the last little bit Cutting through some, uh, you know, this is actually the cardboard box that came with the sword. Um, traditionally, this is the first target that any sword cuts, but, you know, in this case, I saved it for a little bit later. Uh, and you can see that, like, I'm able to get, like, nice clean cuts, you know, like, they're, they're simple. I'm not doing anything crazy because the cardboard is not really affixed to the stand all that, all that well. And, uh, you know, I'm out in the snow and just kind of having fun, you know, like, playing with my new toy. Um, I didn't notice like any on any of the cutting stuff that I've done that like, you know, shock was transmitted to my hands or that the blade was like whippy. It felt like a nice like stiff blade. Um, I did see one other commenter that also picked up one of these, you know, commented on the uh, on the tip seeming a little fragile to them. Um, and I, I, you know, I got to admit that I, I made a boo-boo 
and I did, you know, <laughs> hit the concrete a little bit with the with the tip of my sword uh, while I was out there cutting the pumpkins, and I didn't have any, you know, like the the tip survived just fine, you know, like it didn't it didn't take any of the tip off or bend it or damage it in any way. So, uh, you know, so the quality the quality is there, um, you know, and, and oops, my bad, but you know, it's good to know that the sword, you know, can take it. So yeah, I think that about sums it up for the uh, Tauber Longsword from Angus Trim and Valiant Armory. Um, as far as where you can get it, uh, I believe that Cult of Athena still has a few, um, and Age of Chivalry, last I checked, also had a couple. That's where I got mine from. They were really quick with the shipping. If you're a collector of high-end production swords, then I think there's pretty much no way that you're going to be dissatisfied, uh, you know, with, with what you're going to get from these two. So, uh, yeah, get out there, get yours. Uh, I think there's another model coming with a fishtail pommel soon, uh, and then more coming after that. So, you know, get them while they're hot because I know they're making them in small batches and we'll see you next time.